Boy, just be yourself. If people don't like you, if you're being yourself, fuck them. Yeah. Big Los. Hollywood Care. And welcome to another episode of The Noise. If you haven't yet, go ahead and follow us on the big three at The Noise Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, you can go to beatnetworkonline.com slash The Noise and catch up with everything The Noise, including our official playlist, at least our first week playlist of the we Tuesday tunes, what we calling it? <laughs> <laughs> we still ain't come up with a name, do we? <laughs> Some dealing with Tuesday, uh, shit. Actually, I'll put that out to the ear hustlers, whatever y'all want to call it. It's coming out on Tuesdays. Let give us a name and we'll rock with it. Uh, right. but yeah, we put, well, we just put out our list, our playlist of our, uh, favorites of 2018 so far. Which I am very pleased with. Very, very pleased with. And I've been getting a lot of good reviews from it. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but of course, this is just volume one. We're going to, you know, top it off at the end of the year with basically uh, the finishing of our favorite songs of the year. So again, you can go to beatnetworkonline.com slash the noise and listen to the playlist at the bottom of the page. And of course, check out everything Beat Network on the website itself. Uh, don't mind Kev's voice. We actually lend him out to Skynet here and there to, you know, <laughs> cover some bills coming in. So this is, um, this is the Terminator Hollywood Kev. So he may say some outlandish stuff on this episode. Nah, it's not going to be too outlandish. <laughs> it, it, it's not. Anyway, man, how, how's your, how's your day going, bro? How was your week rather? How was my week? Um, my week was chill for the most part. Um, got a chance to check out Ant Man and the Wasp, which was dope. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's a good movie. It's way better than the first one because the first one I was like, eh, I, I never really cared for the regular one, but the <laughs> second one is actually it's it's actually pretty good. I, I recommend that one. That uh, Equalizer, the second Equalizer, that was great. That was real good. Um, and we actually it, get man. We actually got a review coming out of that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. From uh, the yeah. Back to the Classics boys for their really back show, and yeah, hopefully y'all are enjoying that new show, that new B Network content, uh, really back, hosted by Jay Alonzo and David Neff. So they had Sky, they did their skyscraper review, uh, kind of as their debut, and then uh, the new Equalizer two coming out. Uh, I guess same time as this. So you, you can listen to this and then watch that or vice versa. You know, that one's a little shorter, but uh, they give their thoughts on the movie. But you said you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I I enjoyed it. Um, and, I, and I like it because they they didn't, you, you got to have patience with that movie. Like it didn't just jump into the action. They kind of, they did a good job of showing that he, uh, Denzel's character is like a regular dude. He's just all the way with the shit. <laughs> There's no lack of shits. Yeah, not not even a little bit. Not like not even a remotely a little bit. He's a regular dude. Like they was just showing him do what a regular person does. He wasn't doing nothing extra ordinary or you know, I mean running, jumping off building from rooftop to roof. None of that. He was doing right. he was a lift driver. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it it was it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Didn't he work at like Home Depot or Lowe's in the first one? Yeah, something like that. It was something. I remember seeing those in the commercials. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I got. Do, I do have a confession to make dealing with the movie. Um, I know. I'm glad this isn't going to risk my black card. And I love Denzel as an actor. Uh, one of the most amazing talents. Hall of Fame career, absolutely. But I did not see Equalizer one. Really? No, that like, might I, be I'm, something you want to check out. Like, like. I mean, it's as out. The second one's out, obviously. So that might be something you want to check in when you up chilling right now. You need something to watch. Check it. Check that out. Bruh, I don't know what it was. I just completely missed it. I don't know if I was in school or what was going on, but I completely I missed the Equalizer one. I know one. I didn't see it when it, I know I didn't see it like in theaters or nothing. I, I did definitely saw it at home. So in a sense, I kind of missed it too. But once I jumped on board, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I would not be surprised if they make a third one. Yeah. I was going to go with Jay and Dave when they went to go see it. But mm -hmm. I was like, there's no point of, you know, wasting the money. When I'm technically gonna be slightly lost, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Now, from I definitely get what you're saying. From what I've been hearing from their review, it's not too much reference back to the first one. It's just more of a return of the Equalizer, right? Yeah, there's not there's not 
Um, there, yeah, there's, there's no reference to the first one. So you could actually you can watch it to to and make this your first one if you wanted to. He's just if you if you see in the first one, you just know what he's about. You know what I mean? But I think they they did a good job of of bringing some of the the layers to this character, and you actually able to see kind of why he does the thing he does, you know what I mean? But so yeah, you don't you don't really need to see the second one out of that thing. I mean the first one out of that thing about it. Well you can you can kinda let that 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 go and just watch it as a clean slate and be straight. And I, I may still catch it. They actually had it on in the break room at my job and I was like, you know, this this looked like something I actually should have caught when the wave was high. Yeah. So hey, I, I'm hey, definitely listen, gonna double listen. back. He is all the way with these shits, <laughs> all the way. Like, like, and 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 the coolest thing is about this movie is it's it's Denzel. So you know it ain't no no super running or super stunts. It's a nigga looking cool while he beating your ass. Right. Did you know what? Again, Denzel, Hall of Fame career, Hall of Fame actor. I watched him on Jamie Fox, uh, little pseudo talk show. That he has. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, I did that too. That uh, behind behind the script. Behind yeah, behind yeah, be, or is beyond the script or behind the script. Beyond the script. Beyond the script. Beyond the script, and is uh, done by Grey Goose. I would love to get some kind of deal like that. But yeah. um, I was watching him on the show, and I'm like, damn, Denzel is really looking like a dad out here. <laughs> yeah, I think I think honestly, I'm what I'm thinking is that the last role he did or whatever he had to kind of gain weight for was Fences. I don't think he, he, uh, nah. Well, fences he did have weight. Well, maybe that was the one he gained weight. For. Either way, the man gained weight for a role and ain't really lost it. This was oh, he, right. It was the uh, Roman J. Esquire joint. Yeah, he ain't. He ain't really. He ain't really lost that. He was right? like, you know, I'm kind of comfortable. I'm a little fluffy. I'm warmer in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he I can put my cookies way. on top of my stomach. Now, if you can tell, I've been fat a very long time. So I've mastered. <laughs> I've mastered all the fat hacks. <laughs> so I'm pretty all the good treats. All the good treats. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he's reaping the spoils of the fat hacks. And that's probably why he didn't take off. The- <laughs> Yo, um, you know what movie I'm really looking forward to though? Mm. Glass. You know what? It's funny you say that because um early a little about about a couple hours ago I watched a trailer for it. And it looks really good. And I do got to go back and watch Unbreakable again because I have seen it, but you know, it's so far removed that I need a refresher. That was one of those um, movies that you loved when you watched it and you just never went back to it because I would have to go back and watch it again too. But it was an amazing movie. Yeah, I would have to go back and watch it again. But you know, I've seen a trailer for Glass and it, it, it looks pretty good. I have to say, that looks pretty good. I'm not mad at Shazam or Aquaman. They both uh, look pretty good. What's, what's wrong with those two? C- c- continue, continue. <laughs> I was just, no, I was just saying they 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 look good for for what they are. They look good. They don't they don't look bad. Like I, I think I think maybe a lot of people try to compare DC's movies to Marvel, and you don't need. Oh to. yeah, that's you, where they fuck up. It. Yeah, you you compare them to to DC movies. You compare you you take the movie for what it is, and I'm I'm, I'm not complaining with either. I, I think some good movies are about to come out, or later in the year. This is, we gonna have a good run of movies. Now, I agree with you with Aquaman. Um, Aquaman actually looks dope. Now I have been fooled by I have been fooled before because mm-hmm. Batman v Superman looked dope too. And then you got in there and it was like this is two and a half hours I'm never gonna get back. And I can only imagine the things I could have dedicated those two and a half hours to. <laughs> like especially with the shit I'm doing now, like editing these movie reviews and editing the shows and getting ready to drop new shows and working on I could have used those two and a half hours, but listen, that's a whole nother rant. <laughs> I look at the Aquaman trailer and I'm like, I want, I expected something. Do you watch, did you ever watch Entourage when it was on? No, nah, I never seen Entourage. All right. So you're, this is going to completely go over your head, but they had an episode where the main actor did the Aquaman movie in the mm-hmm. TV show. And mm-hmm. when they dropped a the trailer in the, in the TV show, I was like, they could do an actual Aquaman like that. So when I saw the trailer this time around of Aquaman, I was like, I got the same feeling. So I'm like, okay, okay, when we get in there, I don't want to keep my expectations too high because, again, Batman v Superman trauma. Oh, and Suicide Squad trauma. Let me also mention that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad movie. That, ooh, that's a whole nother episode. I need to get on back to the classics. But but, uh, I don't want to get my hopes too high. And then I go in there and I'm like, oh, there you go. There you go again, DC. 
Um, Shazam, on the other hand, and I told Jay Alonzo this earlier, I like when they modernize and kind of normalize the superhero costumes for the movies. Like they even did it for Batman and Superman. I feel like they took Shazam's outfit directly from the comic and put it on TV. And it just makes it look way too cartoony for me. I can understand that, but I think that's on purpose. Cause I think with DC, they realize like their characters are so overpowered and, and not necessarily one dimensional, but they're so, What's the word? I said, I guess the I guess the word in a sense would be one dimensional. They they don't need. You know what I mean, Marvel can kind of branch off and, and tell a, a, a backstory and it still be good. Marvel on the other hand, they kind of have to come out the comic because they're there because they're characters. You know what I mean? Like their characters don't have many layers to them. Like Superman is Superman and Clark Kent. That's it. You know what I mean? You're a reporter and he saves shit. That's that's all he does. <laughs> Iron Man on the other hand, this nigga builds a school or does something. You know what I mean? So it's I think it's less layers. So they have to pull it from the comic. But then when you look at, and, and this isn't me trying to compare Marvel to DC movies. Again, I've accepted long ago that these are two completely different companies, production buildings, staff, record labels, and crews. I've completely you know, accepted that. <laughs> <a record> label, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> but I don't see Shazam fitting into the dark universe, which is ultimately what DC is building with their movies. Like, it, this doesn't have that noir kind of feel. And I'm not too familiar with their comics. I'm going to be completely real with you. I'm not too familiar, so I don't know how Shazam would tie into the Dark Universe, how they would tie into Justice League, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I don't see how this film can connect. Now, for example, this is me going back to why I said I don't compare Marvel and DC. Jay Alonzo said he thought it was dope how they set it up where this is little kid inside this grown man's body and he's just being this childish superhero. Yeah, I thought that was dope too. I thought that was super dope. Damn, I get that. Okay, I must be a harsh critic then. You must be right. I told you that. I, told you <laughs> I, that. I promise you, I'm gonna start giving my two thumbs up like Ebert and Roper. And I guarantee you. <laughs> oh my bad, but we gotta go old school. Siskel and Ebert, you know, rest in peace to the homie. <laughs> <laughs> and because when I when I look at it, I'm like, Spider Man did a way better job with making an immature superhero. But see, that's the thing. You, you, we, we're watching it, and we, we're classifying Spider Man as as a man. But he's still a kid. No, he's still 15, a kid. 15, 16. This is, and this person is same age as my younger. I think it's dope. Like, like you know, what I mean, you, you turn into this adult, but you still got the mind of a child. I think that's dope. I don't know. I may have to give it another run back. I will. I will say this though. And this is this is a theory that I actually have been thinking about this week, and I want to get it on wax. So, if in case Marvel does it, you guys can hear that I did it first. Marvel needs to speak to me <laughs> directly. They need, yeah, because they need to come speak to me about what I would do with Marvel is make a Marvel dark. What I would do, since they have so many characters, I will make a Marvel Dark, and I, some of those characters would would be come out just as Marvel Dark. You still have the regular Marvel movies that come out, but I would make a Marvel Dark. For instance, the Sony uh, Venom is not going to be considered in the MCU once everything is already over to 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 Disney or whatever. I'm pretty sure they're going to remake or make another Venom movie. Okay, so with that, if they want to keep it on the same, which is such a waste of time, Holland. It is. It really is. But if they want to keep it on the same dark, they can make a Venom Marvel dark and see when you got when you got for future for future. I just realized I called him Tom Holland, Tom Hardy. My bad. Tom Hardy. For future movies, you could uh, do so. You can you can have Venom in Marvel Dark if you wanted to. If you wanted to make Fantastic Four part of the regular MCU, then you can do that. Since Deadpool is already R rated, you can make X Men kind of Marvel Dark and kind of have the two, and then that leaves it away to where you could merge characters or bring in characters. Let's say let's say Venom is on Marvel Dark, but this particular movie, we got a, a little bit of a crossover with Spider-Man. So Spider-Man kind of comes over to essentially the movie will be dark. You, you get what I'm saying? Like they mm -hmm. can kind of classify it out. DC can do the same thing too, but, and I, I, I will have to dive a little bit deeper into DC because they're a little bit more complex, but I really think Marvel can do it the, the same way. And I, and I realized this watching Ant-Man and the Wasp, like when it was coming on, how it was coming on, they could really do like a, a something a little bit more for kids, something a little bit more for adults, even though it's not bad either way currently. They can do that and it should still work. But again, they need to come talk to me about that. But y'all know I said it first. <laughs> now, I I'm not trying to uh, piss in your Cheerios. That's like my new thing. I've been saying that all week. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're already 
kind of doing something like that with their like R rated flicks because you know with the of course with the success of Deadpool one and Deadpool two, and then the success of Wolverine, I think they're looking to take some of those more darker characters and assign them that R rating. Now I don't think they have a specific name for it, but they've just been calling it the you know R rated Marvel movies. Yeah, but but if you look at it. What what if they were to do it my way? It uh, it uh, I can explain to them how they can kind of bridge the universe. And see, when they're putting out these movies, they're just putting out putting out just just standalone movies. And in the case of Deadpool, we only see a couple of so to speak X Men characters because they didn't have the rights. You know what I mean? So now, let's say if they were to make a movie, make it don't don't try to make a movie. Me personally, I would say don't try to make a movie because fans want to see X Men. Make it on the darker side. So if you wanted to, you could throw Deadpool in a crossover. You're watching the X Men movie and a couple scenes of Deadpool and or vice versa and stuff like that. Maybe they are doing it, but my way is better. <laughs> X that down market July 22nd. <laughs> well, this be out the 23rd, but whatever. Um, just, but one last thing before we get into the show, you know what movie I actually went back to this week? Hmm. Seven. I've never seen it. You've never seen seven. I have not. Listen, it's on Netflix. I don't know what you're doing tonight after we get done recording, but go ahead, put that on. Enjoy yourself. I've because- seen like I've seen I've seen people watch, but I've never I never watched it. I remember watching it when I was younger, but I haven't gone back to it in a while. Being older, understanding exactly what was going on and understanding the world with how some of these serial killers are. Bro, that movie was brilliant. That movie was absolutely brilliant. Now, the funny part at the end when my man was, what's in the box? Like, that part was hilarious. But, and damn, it's going to go over completely over your head because you ain't seen it. (laughs) <laughs> just just save it just save it dude I, it, it's funny you bring up that because I was watching the Denzel thing too and he said he had passed up that movie that's what I made me go back movie. to it that's what made me go back to it when Denzel said he passed up on 7 I was like what would have what would 7 be with Denzel opposite Morgan Freeman let me let me get you on what would what would the Matrix be with Will Smith playing Neo? Hey, I, and I had that exact same conversation after I got done watching Seven. I'm I'm cool. I'm a pass on that. Yeah, I'm a pass. That was a good pass. I'm glad he didn't do that. Yeah, because when yeah. I when I think about the dryness of Neo, I think about the dryness of Will Smith and After Earth. I don't need that in my Matrix. <laughs> I don't need After Earth Will in my Matrix. And this is bef- well before After Earth, so who knows what it would be. And like he was still trying to develop oh, himself. I got one more for you. Now I didn't see the movie. Pretty sure you didn't either. But imagine Fifty Shades of Grey, and I can't remember my man's name. But imagine Fifty Shades of Grey with the dude from Walking Dead that everybody loves. Who Rick? Uh- <laughs> not not Rick, but the the crossbow dude. Oh, with with Daryl. Uh, 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 yeah, Daryl. I think it's, yeah, Daryl. What's his fucking real name? Um, God damn it, I can't remember now. It's funny because I just watched the trailer for the new season too. Um, now I haven't. He was the original pick for Christian Grey. Yeah, yeah. Now, Court, knowing knowing what that whole thing is necessarily about, I don't know if. Yeah, yeah. It's certain. It's crazy because we can have favorite actors and they'd be like, and with favorite movies, and, and we would love to see our favorite actors in our favorite movies. But it's good when they pass up certain stuff or they pass up and they're unsure. Them personally are unsure, but it works out. I.e., Will in the Matrix. Like, I, I, I'm happy with that. But that's why. I say when I went back to watch seven, which again is still an amazing movie and you'll see when you watch it, I'm like, that may be one of those roles that would have made the movie better. Cause that, be. cause that was a young Brad Pitt and he was, he was making his way through, but he still did a great job, but he was like making his way through in the movie. I feel like you switched that with Loki at the time of vet Denzel and the Denzel in his prime. That was 95, bro. That is true, but then we also have to look at it this way: when you're dealing with a character like or a player like Denzel, like when is he not in his prime? That's the gotcha. You can you can hit Brad Pitt's non-prime movies. Exactly. But Denzel has always been in his prime, but '95 was like that. Go '95 was low-key that golden year for black actors and actresses, and then we took like a almost like a backseat, and now we're starting to get back to that place again. But in the early nineties, the early to mid nineties, we was killing shit. Yeah, I agree with that. Did you see? uh, Go ahead, go ahead. 
And I was gonna say because it was it was it was black. It was, now, even if the name wasn't blockbuster, it was blockbuster movies being made, and the black person was either the lead or or the the major co star. So I agree with you on that. Right. Like I was listening to um. Well, I was watching this video that of course got shared on Facebook, and it was Eddie Murphy on the Arsenio Hall show. No, 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 mm-hmm. no. He was on uh, Jay Leno. My bad. Uh-huh. He was on Jay Leno and. They were talking about how when Boomerang came out, and of course, when you're young, you watch the movie, you don't pay attention to these things. But when Boomerang came out, all the high ranking, you know, professionals that was in the um, what was it, a magazine company or fashion company? Um, the, that they in Boomerang uh, in the moon. Anyway, well, whatever the company was, all these high ranking people were all black faces, like all of them. And there was a few white people here and there, but none of them was in like a major role or even in a major positioning. And Eddie was joking about that. Like, wait, where are the white people? Who's running, you know, who's running the the company? (laughs) And it was it was such a major thing. And I'm like, wow, Eddie Murphy had blockbuster after blockbuster. Boomerang was huge. Boomerang low key changed Eddie's life. And Boomerang was huge. Beverly Hills Cop was huge. Like. Like, yeah, yeah. And in Boomerang, all the main characters were black. All the people, the majority of the cast was black. And then now that we, I run it back, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Right. And we lost that for a cool minute until recently. So, um, I think it's a lot of factors that go into that to, to the reason why we lost it. I think a lot of factors go out because, well, one, you did got some some during that time some non black actors that came up and they were phenomenal. So I have to I have to give them credit on that. But then I also I have to realize some of the black actors that were at the peak, they got that bag and said they good. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like they didn't they didn't bother to follow up or they couldn't get work or I I think it's a lot of factors in that, but you're not wrong at all. At all. But just to circle back, man, I don't know. When you watch Seven, you let me know. We could talk about it next week, but you let me know. I feel like Denzel would have made Seven even better, and that was already an amazing movie. And then the cast, Morgan Freeman, fuck him at, you know, now, but at the time, Kevin Spacey, um, then you'd slide Denzel in there. And now, he, I wonder if they would have changed his wife, because in, in the movie, his wife is Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Brad Pitt's wife. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they would have changed the wife. And when you think about that time, bro, it could have been Halle Berry. It could have been Nia Long was coming off of uh, Friday. Uh, it could have been anybody, dude. <laughs> You're right. You're, you're right. Who, who See, you I'm, ain't I'm even seen the movie. You getting excited? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna probably try to check it out tonight, if not tomorrow. But I'm definitely gonna check it out before we 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 back on that quick for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so there were a couple things we wanted to talk about. It was a fairly dry week. Some things that happened, but nothing to really jolt. But the biggest thing that I saw actually happened today. Well, it came out today. And that was Takashi was kidnapped, pistol whipped, and robbed in Brooklyn. Mm, mm, mm. In your own city. Mm. Now... <laughs> The same way I feel about this is the same way that I feel about Takashi, where I'm not shedding no tears for him, but I think it's it's crazy that it's, that it happened to him. But just to kind of go back to certain conversations that we had, you know, some weeks ago, not not even too long ago, it could be under a month, if anything. <laughs> we just said that people are being shown, these trolls are being shown that you are not untouchable. Everyone can be touched. Now, granted, this wasn't a, re- it could have been a revenge. We'll, we'll see how everything unfold. But this wasn't no mm-hmm. revenge for any of his trolling. This wasn't, you know, payback. This wasn't, you know, just some random ass, yo, stay off the, you know, stay off the internet. It was none of that. They went in there with the intentions to rob him. Right, and not only did they rob him, they was able to get into his crib, get his jewelry, his baby mama, and his kid was there. That's definitely one thing that I think is fucked up about it. But he didn't just get touched; he got full blown violated. Well, I mean, when you playing that kind of dangerous game, what can you expect? I mean, don't get me wrong; I don't, I don't want to see nobody hurt or robbed, whatever the case is, and I know that's traumatizing to the to the girl and kids, but. When you when you playing those type of games and you not really listening to nobody, you know what I mean, especially claiming that you can't be touched and saying if I ain't dead in forty eight hours, y'all pussy. I mean, again, it's I don't think it's any type of revenge thing, but 
at the same time, you can't walk around, especially in New York, when it's when it's wolves out. You know what I mean? Like people is hungry, and you be on camera doing, you know, giving kids twenty dollars and stuff like that. That's great, but that's not changing Joe Blow down the street who can't feed his kid, and you walking around on on, on with, with with ten k in your pocket. You 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 got caught sleeping. And that's and that's the scary thing about it because he's now you see. That he's not always riding with a hundred dudes. He he he's made, lucky they didn't kill him. Oh yeah, and they said he was. Uh, some reports said he yelled out the window for help when they got past some people. I'm like, dude, you could have been a DOA right then and there. Easy, like easy. way too easy. The kid, we just seen the, the Triple X kid get killed, man. And and uh, granted, I'm not familiar with dude or anything like that, but I have to believe he wasn't trolling away six nine. Man. Well. Triple X wasn't too much of a troll. He was more so just like, he was just dark. Um, right. yeah, that's really the best way to put it. He was just dark. Takashi, that man's a troll. He's oh, constantly yeah. telling, he's constantly testing people's gangster every day. You know, he chilled out on it a little bit since Triple uh, X died from what I've been hearing. But the fact but that you, just- go ahead. No, I'm saying that's when the people come after you, though, is when you, you when you, when you claim you, you done or you good. Usually oh, absolutely. With the, with the, when you sell drugs, as soon as you you trying to move on to something else, you ain't you ain't in the right spot. You 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 trying to move on and and your ass get pinched. So this was very similar to that. And it's crazy because it it exposes the chink in his armor. It exposes that he's one not always with a thousand people, and two, you catch him at the right time, you can really do some legit damage. Cause they blocked, oh, yeah. like they blocked his driveway, snatched him into the van, pistol whipped him till he, till he passed out. And then when he when he woke up, they was in the crib, and he told and they told him like, yo, you know, go get the bread, go get me whatever. And he and he made that shit happen. Now imagine if that was an enemy, that was just a dude looking for the come up. Like I see you stunting, I know you sitting on something, I need that. Imagine if that was somebody that was like legit, yo, I really do kill niggas. Or I mean, who's to say it wasn't? Who's to say it wasn't nobody that was legit, but was like, you know what? I ain't, I'm finna get this bread. I'm not finna get this heat on on killing you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I hate to refer back to this, but they killed this man. Kid. They 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 picking up the, that other kid's killer. So who's to say? I I can't put it past the the, crim, the person that did this to say, you know what? I, I ain't trying to go to jail, but I need this bread, and I got a better chance of getting away with this bread because you ain't really gonna say shit opposed to me killing you. So let me go ahead and do that. Right. Who knows? So I look at XXX and I look at Takashi. Again, I don't, I, to my knowledge, X wasn't a troll. XXX wasn't a troll. I know for sure Takashi was. But in comparison, they're showing you that this new age of thinking and thinking that, you know, rappers don't get ran up on anymore or people in general don't get ran up on anymore. These are two of your faves touched, touched in the worst ways. Takashi got lucky because again he made a lot of enemies. Takashi got mm-hmm. very lucky. How this ain't gonna change the landscape, but how can people still go about thinking that this is just trolling? This is just internet fun because there's a lot of his fans and some of the cats in the in, in the younger millennial you know generation Y, generation X, whatever the hell letter we on right now. It's a lot of people in no, in those areas that's like, yo, dude, that did that was pussy. He was just joking. Y'all, you know, older cats, y'all gangsters, so sensitive, yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, he brought this on himself if it was anything other than a robbery. I think I think it even it, it may not change the narrative, but I think it did change the landscape because you get those young kids that 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 feel the way they feel. But they, but they're not brave enough to go troll no more because their troll king got fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, right. don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't want physical harm to happen to anybody. But this may turn around and be a good thing far as the culture goes because now these these kids that that troll be like, I, I, I can get touched. Like I'm seeing it. My, my favorites are are losing this trolling war in a sense. You know what I mean? So right. it, it may not change the narrative, but they can they. It, it may change the landscape, I mean, they can call them pussy all they want to. They these young kids gonna learn to respect the shooter. Oh, absolutely! First of all, they are gonna learn that the shooter still exists. They exactly. they forgot the shooter was out there. 
and, and the killer part is he may be out there a little bit more because shit is way more scarce than what it was. I remember, I remember like back in the, you know, in the nineties, of course I wasn't looking for him, but I remember like the older people able to go talk to somebody that same day and get a job. Right. You can't do that now. Right. It's a whole process. You you can start. And it's funny because I'm getting interviews for places that I filled out like a month ago or something like that. Like it's a whole process now. So with that in mind, some of these, some of them young guys that's, that's in and out like that, they're not trying to wait for that process. Or they can't wait for that process. Right. They daughter need to eat tonight. They can't wait two weeks till they get a job. So, and if you got it, they're going to take it. And quite frankly, I don't blame them. If my daughter got to eat tonight and I don't have no means but to take what you got, then I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> Why does that sound directed at me? Listen, you ain't gonna get too far. No, no, because I know if it if it really came down to it, and that was to hit you up, you'd do what you can. I'm talking about for the for the man on the street who thinks he can't be touched or he shouldn't be because of X Y Z. Takashi just showed you that not only is he a troll, he's a famous troll, and he got fucked up. And that's why I don't think. Now, granted, I don't. I think they could have been pushed to being a shooter because when you pistol whip somebody enough for them to pass out because they the report said he didn't just get hit once they hit him until he was (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm saying until it was over for him you know what i mean i so i'm not saying he could or couldn't have been a shooter but it's probably that knowledge of him being the universal troll king that they didn't feel bad about like nigga, no run it (laughs) and we're gonna show you that you're you're not invincible but who's but no but nobody really is gonna feel bad for it. When you in that type of game, you know what I mean, whether you like dude or not, you see what's going on, you're like, nah, that ain't that ain't how we move, this ain't how we, we supposed to be moving. So yeah, yeah. I think I think by it happening in Brooklyn, it saved them because it very well could have been somebody from a uh, Chicago or Texas and right now we could be talking about the boy's death. But I, I so I think it's good that it happened in Brooklyn, but like you said, it goes to show everybody can get touched. And and yo, that circles back to what you said. In his own hood, you got yeah. did like this in the spot that you said you're currently the king of, and they did use like that in your own spot. You can't go to Chicago. They're like, oh, Takashi, I can get to you, and I've been telling you I can get to you, but now I can actually get to you. Now it's been done. It's like it's like you remember that movie Three Hundred? Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah, it's like it's one of my favorite movies. You know, you know at the end where he throws a spear and it, and it cuts dude, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And maybe he could have killed him, whatever the case was, but he just wanted to make you bleed. So for everybody else, they see, this is what this is what this person in Brooklyn has done. He has made Takashi bleed. Right. Literally, literally and figuratively. So now people like, like the people from Chicago, they're like, oh, word, so it's like that? Okay, cool. So, you know what I mean? You better move different. Or I might, I might get you. Or like you said, I think if not last show, the show before that, just because they done beef with you, don't mean that they're not pissed off about something that happened a couple years ago. Absolutely. So, Takashi could turn on over this new leaf and and be, you know, Mister Zen. But that don't change the fact that two years ago you called me a pussy, and I see you right now. Like, and that goes that change that. And that goes back to what I said on that episode. The only way Takashi's going to get out of this is not making no sometimes I'll be trolling too much videos. He needs to address these cats that he's been coming at for these views and for these likes. For his safety, yeah, for his safety and everything. For his safety. He needs safety. to address these cats. He do, and he needs to disappear. After that, he needs to address these cats. If he's going to make music, do it, you know, the, the proper way and just, like, not do no troll for a right. while. Like, he, he really run around like he 50 Cent. You, 50 was going at it with niggas that got life. No, dog, it's not going to work. 50 was going at it with niggas that got life and walked away with nine bullet holes. Right. <laughs> right. Let's not forget that also important <laughs> fact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Walked away with nine of them. You know what I mean? Nine like, hot ones. Like, come on, man. You just got yeah. slapped up until you fell asleep. You're right. It could have been so It could have been worse. something completely different. And, and, and that's not even a testament. It could have been worse for you. It could have been worse for your loved ones. Exactly. Because like, you, you put your... Ba- well, okay, I can't say he put his baby mama and this kid in danger because we don't know if this was an enemy or just a nigga looking for a come up. But he, but, but it don't matter. He still did put him in danger. He put him in danger. If, if it was troll, if it was a trolling revenge thing, he put him in danger by doing that. He put him in danger from, from flaunting and then talking shit. And, oh, in front of everybody. I didn't even, so think, about even, I didn't even think about that. Either way, didn't even think about that. When you, when you become that big, you know what I mean? You got to move differently. Right. You got to, you got to, a hard head make a soft ass so he could still be a kid but when you got that kind of money you you have to move differently 
But it's like but it's like you said a while ago. How how long do we allow this he's just a kid shit to get by? Because isn't he like 23, 22, 23? Is he? I honestly thought this guy was like 17. Hold on, I'm about to hit the Googles right now. We need a shirt to say get hit the Googles. <laughs> or, do, or like do, doing my Googles. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Takashi 6 9 is 22. Oh, well, then he, there's no excuse there. He's 22. There's no excuse. Now, don't get me wrong. You can still be young, but there's there is no excuse. Then. There's no excuse. You should be in the game well enough. And it, I think, what, this year or last year he blew up. So by the time he was 21, you should, you should know how you're supposed to be moving. Right. And I, I guess kudos to him for being innovative, but – as he can see, that shit ain't working out for him too well, and and that's what I'm saying, dude. This changes the this changes the landscape. Even though I don't think people are gonna move with the change of the landscape. Oh yeah, that's for sure. It's still gonna be those ones that that try it. Oh, it happened to him, but it won't happen to me. But what's so crazy is that a lot of these like famous I won't say famous trolls because it's that's Takashi. A lot of these internet trolls who normally bounce from person to person to person, they're getting figured out. Like when I talked about my boy Junior the Truth, when he had his troll, he was able to get a picture of the front of the dude's house, let alone his information. Mm-hmm. So when he hit him up, yo, so and so that lives at so and so, so and so address, and go to so and so high school, you need to chill, and then send him a picture of the crib. That was just that was a, a humble college educated dude <laughs> that's just trying to right, move right. right. You know exactly. what I mean? Now, granted, now, Jr. definitely would shut a nigga down. That, that's a big boy, but. That was just a regular, you know, content creator. Right, right. Now, I will say far as finding out the high school and stuff, like he, he was on some Mission Impossible shit then. But I will say that people don't realize who the other person that they're talking to. For instance, when I work for the trash company, I'm able to see your deep. I'm able to see where you live, how many bedrooms, how many um, um, the, the blueprint for. I'm able to see everything. So if you are a troll to somebody and let's say, let's say I, I know, I know dude that you're speaking of, he could easily had hit one of his boys up that has that information and get all of it right then and there. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you really don't know who you're talking to on the other end. So when you, when you trolling or when you're doing Whatever it is you call yourself doing, you don't you taking it as just trolling, but you fail to realize this is other people's lives. Right. You know what I mean? So you can get up there all you want to. I, I bet your old boy don't troll no more. I bet you do. Uh, anybody that say, look, bro, I know what high school you went to, X, Y, and Z, I, I bet you they cut that shit out there. Here's why here's why it gets kind of sketchy with six nine. How do you stop doing the thing that made you famous? People recognize you more for your trolling. You don't really hear when you hear people talk about six nine music. Even his fans, when they're talking about six nine music, they're kind of talking about like five or six, you know, specific songs. And that's but see, look, this is also the climate we're in now. That 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 booed up chick is touring off of just that one song. Oh well, now we've been there for a minute. We've been Lauren, there for a minute, right? <laughs> Lauren Hill is still touring off of a one, one album. album. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so having the five or six songs, I don't think I think. If he he does need to stop trolling, but I don't think that's that's I think that's probably got him the most clicks, the most notifications. But I don't think that's put the most money in his pocket. Oh, it's definitely the touring, absolutely. You know what I mean. So I think if he can stay off of that, and then maybe maybe use this positive, and maybe maybe use this as a complete brand flip i'm not saying necessarily don't get out there and be whoever it is you you want to be but maybe this can be a brand flip and it can work in the right way i don't know i'm praying for the kid i just thought about it this changes the landscape of his touring too because remember he was supposed to be a part of some festival and when he was on his way to perform some of the cast that he was beefing with that he was talking big shit to they was on the side of the stage with the mic while other cats were performing like yo where takashi at (laughs) <laughs> well yeah didn't they say they, they wouldn't let him into uh what's that new york festival uh summer jam because of his his antics yeah that's yeah they didn't let him into summer jam for that but it was a festival before before that that dude stormed the stage well they didn't even storm the stage i think they just walked back up and security was like nah i ain't built for this i know what you're talking about i can't remember what festival but i do know what you're talking about i believe he talked about it in an interview didn't yeah he? he did so it's like when you look at stuff like that and you got snatched up and pistol whip like dude Again, you got hit by somebody that 
was trying to better his situation. Exactly. <laughs> he ain't had no quarrels with you. <laughs> exactly. Like people, they, they, these young kids, they better realize it that just because you know what I mean, the 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 OGs or whatever ain't necessarily in the hood no more. Don't mean that they still don't know how to use that thing. And that don't mean they still ain't, ain't plugged in. Exactly. If they exactly. If they, if they ain't gonna do it, different way. If they ain't gonna do it, somebody will. Exactly. You have to move a different way. Well, you got that kind of way. Because I think, didn't they say he got hit with, was it 200,000 in jewels or something like that? It was something crazy. It something, was definitely something, something crazy, crazy. Something crazy in jewels and they walked away with 10K. I mean, I don't give a fuck with nobody. That's a come up. Oh, hell yeah. That's a come up. And then he's in such a delicate situation that, and they know where he's at. If he does snitch and the police don't catch everybody, shit, he going to get more than just pistol whip. And see that puts Takashi in a whole different situation. Because first of all, what inf- what did he see that he has enough information to have enough information to snitch? That's one. Two, going back to his rep, not just the trolling. That now we're shifting from the trolling side to the blood side. Yeah, I was I was just about to get there once you finished too. Now it's like. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole. He's in a whole different ball game. <laughs> Yo, his his livelihood going forward when he wakes up is completely. <laughs> it's completely different. It's, it's, it's if, on even, trial at this point, right? Even if he doesn't feel like it's different for him, like it, it's different. It's different. Being such an internet sensation, like then you step out of the house and you go to the grocery store, and it, and and somebody like me is behind. Him. I know you got beat up and robbed. I'm not saying that I would do anything, but I know. You got beat up and robbed. Like that don't feel good. No, when you step out your house, like everybody knows your shit. Oh yeah, you, you step out the house you in your neighborhood it. with the with the uh, the prestige behind your name. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, like, come on, you 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 trying to you trying to buy some funnies and a nigga behind you, like, yo, how yo, I feel. Right. Like, <laughs> like, come on, man. So yeah, that kid. I don't even want to keep saying kid. No, he's like, you're not a kid. That man, he he got some. He got some learning. I hope he learned. I hope he learned. If he didn't learn, then unfortunately he'll just be another dead rapper. But I hope he learned. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely the thing I I really hope that everyone avoids. And in that aspect, recognize that he is just a troll. But I'm praying that I, that the shit that we talked about was legit when we said he don't need to get killed. He just need that one good ass whooping. Yeah. And yeah, I think this yeah. was that one good ass whooping that he need. Maybe shit. Maybe it was. Maybe maybe, maybe somebody like, yo, I. I I, I don't fuck with you, but I don't, you know what I mean? But I don't not fuck with you. So you take this L real quick and learn something. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, man. I, I'm i I'm glad it's not me because they'd have to kill me because I ain't got nowhere near as much as he had. <laughs> you just say, hey, man, just shoot me in the car, bro. Like when just I knock, shoot me. When I knock, when I knock <laughs> out, just plug me right in the head. Because you know? exactly. you're going to be upset when you, go, when you go inside this apartment. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> but I do have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, when it comes down to Takashi, we were able to have an entire conversation about this guy and not have heard one of his songs longer than a verse. Maybe. Nah, you're, you're right. I think the only I listened to the Joe Budden podcast like three, four weeks ago, and he played a little snippet of that. That was it, Blicky. I don't, I don't or, know. <laughs> I don't know. It was a little snippet of something, and I gotta admit, like that, it gets your juices flowing. But it was just a snippet. It was like. Okay, and, and that was it. Other than that, I haven't if, heard. If that was the same song that I'm thinking about where they had this little dance that they were doing in the video, then, I, that, I mean, it could be called Blicky. But the fact that we were able to follow this dude's entire career <laughs> based off of what's happened to him and what he's been doing, he accomplished everything he was going for. He's paying yeah. for it, but he accomplished everything he was going for. So I kudos to that, so- man. So let me ask you, is the risk worth the reward? Not at all. I'm not getting slapped up by no pistol. <laughs> just because I want to just because I want likes and retweets. Nah, nah. Hard pass on that one. Nowhere near worth the yeah. reward. Yeah, that's that's what likes and retweets to do to you now. That's crazy. And it's crazy because I remember when I first like like got a Twitter or something like that, I wanted like hella followers and stuff like that because I seen that's what it the cool kid, that's what everybody else is doing. So I thought that's necessarily what you want to do. Man, I'd be so happy with my little 300 followers. 
them niggas don't even be on all the time. Like it could be, it could be trouble. For all I know, in that three hundred, half of them is dead. I don't know. Either way, <laughs> I'm so cool with that. Like I don't, mm-mm, I'm good because I think when you're dealing with social media, it magnifies stuff so much. Like I had to really tell myself, like looking at social media, these are highlights. This is not somebody's life. Because I was at one point, I was sitting there looking, and I'm like, damn, this person is doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah, a little bit younger than me, or right around the same age. Like, what the fuck? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? And I realized, like, that's a good moment in your life. Like, that's a highlight in your life. It doesn't change the fact that you may cry before you get up to go to work tomorrow because you don't want to go. You know what I mean? So, right. I had to really tell myself that these, these on social media, these are highlights. And it's funny that you bring that up because it's those highlights. Since people live and breathe social media so much, those highlights will take you out. You saw what just happened to uh, the director of, um, what was it, Avengers? Not Avengers. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. There Boy, we go. let me tell you. Let me tell you now. I, I had heard the, I had heard the rumors of what happened, right? But I was like, uh, whatever. I hadn't seen any tweets. And then yesterday, I seen like all the tweets. My God. Yeah, I saw all the tweets. I'm like, yo, what? What was you doing? <laughs> it was. It was one of those things. Like I wasn't. I mean, granted, they're gross and stuff like that, but I wasn't mad. I was sitting there looking like, are you serious? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it was a shock thing. Like, like no, exactly. Do that? Exactly. And he tried explaining it, talking about he was trying to be provocative and edgy. You know, that was the person that he was at the time. He never participated in any of the actions he spoke of. But I'm yeah, like, also, dog. Also something too that said he was trying to, he was trying to be proactive. He was trying to, it seemed like he was trying to use a verse psychology. Like he was trying to come off as like a Trump supporter or something like that and, and was saying some of this shit but really wasn't a Trump supporter. I don't know, but the tweets are oh either way, he 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 you gotta take that lump, brother. Oh yeah. But my question is, because these are fairly old tweets. Again, how long do we let this, stuff like that, don't get me wrong. Like granted you you deserve to sit your ass down somewhere in the corner. I get it. But let's say if somebody was was making a homophobic tweet or, or something of that nature. And maybe or maybe not, that's who they were at the time that they made the tweet. But but now, do we still hold the person accountable for where they were before? I think it comes down to what you said. Because there's a lot of random tweets that's been, you know, saying drug out of the dark by a lot mm-hmm. of people that they were able to bounce back from damn near the next week. But when you get into joking about pedophilia, when you get into joking about rape, those are like the two. Those are the ultimate no nos in entertainment. Right, I agree. I agree. Like you yeah, see how I mean, quick they got yeah. Kevin Spacey up out of here. Yeah, I agree. Those two things didn't work. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is, how do we view the bank robber that gives all his stuff to charity two years later? Well, like in so, the judicial so say, system, so the, say, as a bank robber. Get, let's, <laughs> well, no, let, well, let's say you robbed a bank this year. Right. You rob a bank, you, you hit it big, you go out, you do whatever you want to do. Um, but in a year or so, you donate 50000 to whatever church or whatever charity. And then you still ain't caught yet. And then two years after that or whatever, sometimes ago, do we still look at, well, you robbed a bank, but you, you, you donated a charity. Like, do we look at them as the donator or do we look at them as robbing the bank? Like, which one? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And And for certain words, like, I get it. I don't know if there necessarily should be a pass, but I know they should be looked at in a different light. But far as actions go, like I just don't know how long do you hold somebody accountable that that hasn't gotten caught, or or maybe they did get caught, but they didn't caught till thirty thirty years later. You know what I mean? Like how do you? I don't know how do you hold somebody accountable? Like granted, he definitely him. He should be held accountable somehow, but. But it, but how do you hold somebody? I'm, not, I'm just saying in general, not necessarily his situation. How do you hold somebody? Just in general, down? no, I feel you. I think again, I, I circle back to. I think it just comes down to the strength of the offense. Um, prime example, and this is this is a stretch, but I mean, we had a whole episode about it before. The uh, girl that I'm sorry, the, the old ass lady that lied on Emmett Till. When uh-huh. she came out and finally admitted I to it. they were trying to reopen that case. If they don't go on somewhere with that shit, right? Half the people dead. <laughs> but um. The lady that lied on Emmett Till, just because she admitted it and it was X, Y, Z plus years ago, do that automatically make you like, oh, okay, well, we forgive you because of no. It's fuck her. It's fuck her today, yesterday, tomorrow. <laughs> right. Well, well her, it was fuck her during the time of her crime because we because I think the people knew what that was. And, and I, I that again, certain situations like that are very sticky and it's a slippery slope. But for the for the general, for the for the masses, like, you know what I mean? If if. If 
something if I if I do something now, you know what I mean, and, and maybe it's bad, maybe it's not. And then 10 years from now, it comes up again. Do I have to still suffer from that, even though I moved past that way of thinking? It depends on the strength of it. That's that's how we're seeing it. It really depends on the strength of it. I I guess it depends on the color, too, because I still ain't seen none of these. Well, I I can't even say that. All I can say is I ain't never seen none of these uh, false rape accusers get, get penalized. Well, they're not going to, because at the end of the day, they were able to get their rocks off. They were able to get their shots but off, see, no but problem. See, but but that's but that's where I'm going. They could the the one that did the football player. The football player did, said he didn't do anything. She lied and said he raped her. He didn't even like sleep with the girl. But he loses everything and like doesn't have a career now. So she managed to fuck up somebody's life. You know what I mean? Does she not pay for that? And if that is the case, then the people that fucked up lives. 10 15 years ago why are they still held accountable now but the person that that did it last year isn't you get what i'm saying like it's, no no it's i understand such a that. slippery slope it's really about how they choose to go after it because it's only so much outrage that somebody can have towards it before it finally gets recognized if there's enough outrage you know to scare some of the people that give these false accusations about rapists then okay then you know not now now this person's canceled even though they're just an everyday whatever or they actually or they actually end up getting uh in some kind of trouble for it um sued or whatever the case is that's going to come strictly off of outrage it's not going to come off of the offense unfortunately and cuz it's that's a that's a tale as old as time it, that's the reason why actual rape victims when they go through things people are quick to be like uh did that happen for real but people aren't mad at the false accusers they're mad at the victim blamers and they, and now granted when there's an actual victim you should be mad at the victim blamers absolutely because them, them cats is, is, is talking crazy but the people that have these false accusations towards people and then come out and get seen as liars they never they, they don't suffer for it they just call kobe a rapist instead of saying that this chick had consensual sex with kobe right and she, and she tried to pull his card not only do they not suffer from whatever accusations lawful, but they don't suffer in the court of public opinion either. I don't, I don't see uh, any, any, like, like, like somebody that, that accused somebody of rape and it wasn't the case. I don't see anybody in their stuff calling them liars or whatever. So they're able to kind of live their life. Meanwhile, this, this other person who probably had nothing to do with treating lost endorsements and lost this or, or the regular person, you know, we, we've seen where, or we heard of where people have spent, hella years in prison and didn't do nothing that sticks with you and it changes your perception and also changes your perception of the police don't get me wrong i'm black so i really don't have a care for much of them anyway but when you see them after you've been through something like that like it's it's like looking at a, a lion in a sense you know what that motherfucker is capable of right you're just trying to steer clear you know what i mean so for somebody to to go through that like it, it changes on a different level but it here but it goes back to what i'm saying the people that really are responsible they get to live like everything's okay not only did a person rem- have years that they can't get back had to eat shitty food you got to go do certain shit around men that you really don't want to um you're not with your family like it's so many different factors that go into that and yet the person that 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 lied in a sense they get to live like I, I don't know I just don't like that I, I just really don't like that oh, yeah, and, and we've seen it a lot I mean don't get me wrong I understand that that victim blaming is a thing which it shouldn't be and, and that stops for some victims from coming out and I want to encourage them to continue coming out and, and get these people that have wronged you in these ways off the street I'm all for that but but don't don't try to lie on somebody for a come up no I agree I agree um, I, one thing dealing with, you know, a person's actions or whatever that I kind of want to talk about, it, this is very unrelated to, you know, rape, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> just, just dealing with actions and consequences. So, and this would be a short conversation. We end up wrapping the show up soon. So you saw that Papa John, <laughs> he, uh, stepped down as chairman mm-hmm. and he recently just said that he regrets the decision of, 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 uh, stepping down. And he but didn't he say last week that he was pressured into saying it. No, that's what I'm talking about. He, he, he had a statement where he said he was pressured into saying it and that's what made him step down. So now him and some of his colleagues he came up with, 
some of the supporters. They're like, you know, he'll definitely be back in Papa John's in some way, shape, or form. And when I hear that, and, oh, I'm sorry, for people that don't know, he said nigga in one of the conference calls. He said he was forced into saying the word. Um, but anyway, that's another story. No, nah, he was comfortable because he didn't even say ER. He said uh, he was comfortable with that. Right. He, he let it rock. <laughs> you know, he, he, let, he let it rock. He, he been said that he was comfortable with it. Right. That was Thursday to him. <laughs> right. um, but I look at that situation. And of course, people that know me, they know, you know, it's no secret that I watch wrestling. I look at the whole Hogan situation. Uh-huh. And you had the, the videotape of him saying nigga like 30 times and making crazy ass statements about how about his dislike for black people. So he was allowed back into um, uh, uh, what was it? I don't think it was. He was allowed the Hall back. Of Fame. There you go. Boom. He was allowed back into the Hall of Fame. And in his statement, he said, you know, this situation has 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 made me be more mindful of my surroundings. And I need to always understand that as as a celebrity, you're always being watched. Yada, yada, yada. Not one apology for all the nigga statements that he made. And you know, what? And people are just letting it rock. In, in the weird way this may sound, I'm glad that he said what he said. And I agree, and I tell you, and I and I tell you why. I'm, I'm glad because when you was when you was letting the N word fly, bro, that's how you truly felt. I don't want you to apologize to me as you truly felt. I really truly see it, so I can stay away from your ass. B, um, he's right. Like you're a celebrity, bro. You can't. You 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 got to watch your surroundings. You got to be mindful. You feel a certain kind of way. It sucks, but 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 fake the funk. That's what you got to do when you're in that position. And don't get me wrong. This is kind of go back to our, our last show when you separate the content from the the actions. Being that I'm a, I watch wrestling too, but I'm, I'm I was never really big on Hulk Hogan. I can care less if he's in the Hall of Fame. But I understand as a wrestler, as that persona, I understand what that did for the wrestling culture and how it's perceived. As a person, yeah, he's shit. But I I, I don't know. I guess it, I guess it's weird. Even the same with Papa John's, like. I don't eat your pizza no way. You calling me a nigga? <laughs> all, all, all right, cool. That's that's what you want to do. I just I just want shop there. We know that the white supremacy people go there. Okay, fine, whatever. Do I want to see this? I really don't care. You know, for the longest, I was like, is Papa John like Puerto Rican? Like what? <laughs> how, listen, this, this is how I knew Papa John's was trash because wherever I've moved in this city, I've only ever the, like the 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 Papa John's. There's a Papa John's on Di and like. Maryland or something like that. That's always been my home, Papa John's. Like, there's only like, there's not, there's like two of them. You know what I mean? That's how I knew when you when you ain't got many establishments and you're not a mom and pop spot. That's how I know you trash. Right, right, absolutely. That's why why you don't see that many Papa Murphys. Yo, Papa <laughs> Murphys true. is so trash. You tell me, I gotta. I already stood here for ten minutes while you prepared my pizza, and I gotta go home and cook it for another for another fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> and then you want fifteen dollars from me from my work? Mm-hmm. We should we should split the cost. Give me seven dollars. I give you seven dollars. Fifteen dollars, and they they gonna charge you to use your debit card. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta run you this thirty five cent. <laughs> you wilding. <laughs> that, that's probably why everybody went to the other Papa. Like damn, fuck Murphy. <laughs> um, but again, I bring up Papa John to go through. It's interesting when people say, "Oh, you want racism to go away? Then stop talking about it." But we're so quick to forgive the people who are being blatant racist. That that statement is so asinine to me. Like, like if that if that's the case, if we if we if we want if we want Wales to go away, stop talking about. Them. Basically, act like they don't exist. You know what I mean? That that shit is so stupid to me. Just because we're not talking about how you feel doesn't change how you feel. You know what I mean? So I, I, that that part is stupid. Far as far as Papa John's go. I have to ask this. Like, okay, so we, we, we know where his stance is at. We we know we're not going to fuck with him. We know which so, side he's on. <laughs> right, right. We know which side he's on. So with that being said, do we do we, do we we want to see him? Like, is, is him removing himself or being removed from whatever position he was in, is that useful to his train of thinking? Like, I, I guess America is, is at least in this. If you do something wrong, you should be punished. But just because you punish – don't mean that it's going to change your, your your thought process, your way of thinking. If that was the case, I wouldn't have got my ass whooped for the same shit growing up. That's why I that's why I hate the whole okay, I got caught being racist or I got caught being um, you know, a sexual deviant, so I'm going to step down. Especially in Papa John's position, you're the founder. 
you may not be the chairman, you may not be the CEO, but you're going to get some kind of kickback for the rest of your life. You're going to have money, period. period. You're you're fine. You're going to be fine. So, like, what exactly does this mean? You basically said was you taking a vacation. That's all you said. Right. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to the office anymore. I'm going to chill. I'm going to eat my bland ass pizza and I'm going to live my life. And just because I ain't going to the office don't mean I don't do the shit at home. So, yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. That it is so crazy that we're we're so quick to forgive the now and I'm obviously I don't mean us. It's still, you know, whatever to him. Public opinion from yeah. the other side are so quick to forgive these people when they do this racist stuff, but act like Oh, it's Elliot because you guys are talking about racism and all this other st- all this other stuff. It won't go away. Like I look at the uh, I look at the kneeling situation. They're still talking about the fines. They're still doing all this other stuff, but no one's paying attention to the fact that Trump threw us under the bus <laughs> in front of Putin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Through America as a hey, country and a staff. Right. <laughs> he handed America to the to the Russians. You know what I mean? Like, and and, and with the football thing, like everybody's talking about that. I just seen recently that um. The Miami Dolphins said that they will final or penalize players. The Giants said they wouldn't. But it's funny to me that you know, these players come out and kneel, and we got all this. You're disrespecting the flag. But meanwhile, I forget, I forget his name. That baseball player, he got caught with some saying some racist tweets like before right. he came big. You know what I mean? He just I don't know if he got suspended. I don't know what it was, but. I seen yesterday that he got to his first game. He got or this morning he got a standing ovation. So we applaud racism now. And you, it even goes back to Black Lives Matter. All lives matter, but then when you're separating um, Mexican children from their parents, all oh, of a sudden, all lives don't matter. Then all lives are quiet at this point. So it's 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 crazy how we're still like as much as people want to say, oh, you stop talking about racism and it'll go away, but you're blatantly putting it in our face that you do not give a damn about colored people in this country. All lives only matter if they're white. If exactly. They're white people. If there was, if there was, uh, and, I, and I say white, and I just mean that in the skin tone factor. Because let's say, let's say it was white people at the border, but they came. Let's say hypothetically, Europe was at the border and they was trying to get over it. Oh, you think you think it'd be an issue? Oh, not at all. They they letting them over in droves. That's how they got here in the first place. Christopher did the meanest pull up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is my spot. We good here. We good. Right. We good. And now we straight. Y'all. We straight. I like this. Hey, y'all, y'all gonna come through, right? Yeah, y'all, gonna come, y'all gonna come through. Hey, they got the barbecue going. Hey, there's <laughs> some ones out here, boy. <laughs> right. Hey, yo, some some people with these feathers and shit, man. They got some food for us. <laughs> Just y'all gonna come. Th- bring them blankets we talked about. <laughs> bring them special blankets. The one behind the counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. This is big joke about mass genocide that, of course, just got overlooked. <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. Like that that exact same mindset has gone nowhere. It has it, ha- it hasn't gone nowhere. Um, and what, what what baffled me about that mindset is that it didn't just happen here. It happened everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't just a. Uh, over in that country, X, Y, and Z happened. No, nah, like these people really just said, we're going to try to conquer this whole thing. That That's my, like when you get into the nitty gritty about that, like our history, and I'm not talking about U.S., I'm talking about world history. It's it's crazy how white European males did the rest of the world. <laughs> and You know, it's funny because I always go back to that DVD I watched. Not DVD. Like I'm over here talking like it's 2003. I go back to the uh, <laughs> documentary that I watched on Netflix, um, Meeting with the Enemy, and my man said, we won. You know, we invaded all this land and we made it ours. We won. And it's it's, it's weird because it, it went from we won to stop talking about it. Stop talking about it and it'll go away because we won. <laughs> Or they just want you to forget that. Just tired. It's, it's not even stop talking about social go away. Stop talking about because I'm tired of hearing about it. Right, right. That, that's all that is. You know what I mean? I think it's crazy though because I, I I guess with the with social media, I guess it kind of helps because you because news travels so fast. I am starting to see more people of color or even some that that aren't of color. They're starting to bring a lot of that shit to the forefront. Oh, absolutely. I, I will see that, but unfortunately, the only way I see a real change being made is if this dude and his cabinet or his people get out the White House. As That's long as way. he, as long as he's still in the White House, no matter how much we talk and, and come together via social media, it ain't gonna change shit. Like you said, this man went on a national, if not worldly, press conference and just said "fuck America" in so many words, right? 
it, one of the things he said in it was um uh we were we were quick to judge uh we were foolish or something like that and i'm looking like you know you're talking about the country that you currently the boss of right right like you right. you, you run that, this you, this this is how I know Trump did not know he was gonna win. He didn't read the the new employee pamphlet or nothing because <laughs> yeah. he 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 committed treason on a on a on on, on national television and anybody else had it been Obama had it been Clinton, anybody else would have been arrested as soon as they landed as soon as Air Force One landed they would have been arrested. Nah, it had it been Obama. He got taken out today. Just you Obama. I mean? like, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I'm telling you, bro. We need to get that island. We need to get that island and just watch it from afar. We need Wakanda. They gave us the blueprint. Okay, see, we got to run we, with the blueprint. If we had a big enough island, we can make our own Wakanda. That's the point. So when you find this island, <laughs> we can highlight the ear hustlers. We band together. Or, 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 or the more serious, regular shit. What, what people need to start doing, and this is something. Once we're once we're at that level, this is something that I would definitely want to implement. We need to just pick a city or or town or whatever the case may be, and just start buying up different stuff and make our own community that way now granted we have seen how that went in the past you know what i mean but i think we're as people more equipped to not let that happen now you know what i mean so i i don't know i we just got to do something we got to do something because and i I say we i don't necessarily even mean black people i mean we as regular common folk we got to do something because we about to look up bro and we about to be up shit's creek without a power and the voice of the voiceless just need to get pushed to the forefront because this is it's getting way too scary out here. It's looking very reminiscent of worst times <laughs> that we call, you know, making it great. But hey, man, that's that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole yeah, nother we episode. Can, we, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, we can we can get deep. We can get we can get deep. We can stretch this thing on one more hour. But um, <laughs> Kev, it's, it's been a good one, sir. Uh, we could definitely uh, look forward to getting you back into the studio next week and hopefully, you know, keep dropping some new some new stuff, man. We, we're, we're working on a lot of good things and I'm excited going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, too. I think uh, I think this like I told you, I think that playlist thing is, is going to push us over the top. So we'll make sure we keep cracking those out for you guys. Absolutely. Um, and then some of the upcoming stuff. I think we're going to cap off the, the end of summer, fall. I think that's going to be like our biggest, biggest moment. So Yeah, this has actually you. been, and it's one thing I do want to mention. Uh, shout out to the Air Hustlers. If we don't say it enough, man, we love y'all. Because this has actually been our best listening month. And we're still not even done with July. But we've seen the most listens this month across all platforms than we've seen in a long time. Now, people can see our uh, our YouTube numbers. And those those numbers is just those numbers because it's not anything visual. But, of course, stay locked to YouTube. You will see some changes. But the numbers behind the scenes, the iHeart numbers, the iTunes numbers, uh, the Spotify numbers, which is insane because we just got there. The Spotify numbers. Thank y'all. We love y'all yeah. so much, man. Com- continue to rock with us. We're going to continue to keep banging out this content. You're going to get us every Sunday, sometimes Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to keep doing our thing. But overall, thank you. To all the ear- the new ear hustlers, BeatNetworkOnline.com, and go ahead and click merch. Get you a shirt. I was just see. I'm glad you said that. We just we got we to gotta create a shirt for the ear hustlers. We got to get an ear hustler shirt, man. We love you guys. We definitely appreciate this wholeheartedly through all of our Rocky, whatever we went through. Thank y'all. Kev, let the people know where they can find you. On Twitter, it's a underscore Hollywood Kev. On Instagram, it's reverse Hollywood Kev underscore. Um, yeah, I'm going to try I'm gonna try to get my own out, outside of beat. I'm going to try to get my visuals out, too. So stay tuned. Yes, sir. Uh, Big Los IG on IG. And, of course, you can find me on Snapchat, Big Los. Um, follow The Noise on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Noise Podcast. And, of course, BeatNetworkOnline.com slash The Noise. You can listen to our favorites of 2018 so far. Uh, this Tuesday, we're going to drop our slept on playlist now this isn't underrated and you know this isn't something that you could you may or may have not heard these are just the artists that we feel 
the mainstream industry sleeps on because they keep the same like five people in rotation. Exactly. <laughs> they keep Drake and, and Drake. Exactly. These rotation. are these are the people in between the Drake records that we really think y'all should pay attention to just as much as y'all pay attention to a lot of your favorites. So this Tuesday we're gonna have our slept on list. Keep rocking with our favorites of twenty eighteen so far. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we appreciate your support. And as always, it's a big loss. Hollywood Kev. It's the noise. <laughs>